When it comes to battle royale games, the first thing that pops into my mind is what kind of vehicle will I be jumping out of? Will it be a bus like Fortnite, a plane like Call of Duty, or something different entirely this time? I do not, however, catch myself thinking if they will have RPG-like mechanics built into the core gameplay loop. Naraka sets itself apart in various ways, but the one that stands out the most to me is its talent system. My name is Blaze, and today I'm going to go over that and four other interesting tidbits of information that I wish I would have known sooner in the Naraka Blade Point Beta. One way Naraka Blade Point separates itself from the current competition is through its talent system. There are individual passive perks you can take into every match after unlocking them, and to do so, you need to acquire the in game currency known as Soul Essence and Tay. These currencies can be obtained from doing daily and weekly quests in a match, gaining levels on different weapon types through the battle pass, and via the in game mail sent to you by the devs. Tay will be used to unlock nearly all the glyphs, which are not available at the start of the game, but but are able to be accessed upon reaching level 6. Once you get to that point, you can start searching for the passives you want in order to make your warrior feel more comfortable pertaining to your playstyle. You can choose between things like an increased energy cap, which will give you more overall dodging stamina, or if you're a glam for punishment, you can also go rage damage taken, which will give you more ult charge when you of course take damage. From min-maxing the passives to choosing how your skills and ultimate work, you can expect a great deal of time to to be invested pre-gaming once you start raking in those currencies so buckle up friend i'm not your buddy friend he's not your friend guy we got a great ride ahead <laughs> I know you've been in this situation before, most of us have. Let me paint you a picture. We start up our game, hop into a match just to consistently find a weapon type that we don't like, but we have to use it anyway because it's all we have. Halfway through the game, we finally encounter the weapon that we've been looking for the entire time on a body we either just dropped or happened to run across. But guess what? Someone else had it first, and now we gotta rock the ugly weapon skin for the rest of the game. In Naraka Blade Point, this is not the case. If you happen to come across a weapon that you want to use, but it has another skin on it, you can simply go to your inventory and change the appearance to what you have selected in your own personal armory. Yeah, you, know, you guys know that you can, uh, a weapon that you pick up, you can change it to make it use your, your skin. Yeah, you hit you. Your in-game map gives you a plethora of information, so make sure to use it. From where the quest objective locations are on the map to when and where the free rift dealer chests will spawn next, Nothing. Uh, my purpose. The map is an integral part of the game, and the more you know how to use it, the better off you will be. Pay special attention to the Bane Breath as well. If you are hit by it depending on your shield and health level, it can easily one-shot you or leave you worse for wear as an easy cleanup for an enemy player. Oh, grab free treasures while you can. Ooh. Oh, what? Oh, mad. do the in-game quest objectives. Once you load into a game, whether it's in trio with your friends or solo dolo, you're gonna wanna be on the lookout for quest scrolls while looting your gear. The in-game quests obtained by collecting the scrolls will reward you with rift coins that you can use at a rift dealer chest to become more powerful. These quests range from striking a bell three times to praying at a statue twice and placing a bounty on an enemy player's head. Whether the rift coins are worth your time, doing the quest will ultimately be up to you to decide side. Just remember, in some situations, having more space to hold potions or soul jades can be the difference between winning an encounter or losing it. When a bounty is placed on you, a quest will pop up and tell you to defend at the bottom of the quest screen. When you are defending, there's going to be a white line, like a little bar. That is the threat level, and it will gradually increase as the enemy player or team gets closer to the person that needs to be protected. On my enemies. Your penance. Ah! 
in the number one spot, we have the aforementioned Soul Jades. To many, this may be self-explanatory if you read the wiki, but to the rest, you may not have realized it even after playing the open beta. Soul Jades are powerful relics that are only obtainable while in a match and can help you out massively. You have the basic Soul Jades that give you a base attack or health boost, while others offer an increase to your melee and ranged damage resistance. Then come the more intermediate Soul Jades like Group Heal and Quick Heal. The Quick Heal will decrease the amount of time it takes to use a shield and health potion, and it can also be complementary to the group heal, Soul Jade, which can heal an entire group in a trio's match. Lastly, you have the more advanced Soul Jades that act like modifiers and can change the way a weapon works entirely, give you the ability to roll and repair your weapon at the same time. Your playstyle is unique, so you may value more health in the long run over something like bonus attack power. If you want to be a sniper and not engage in melee battles, range damage resistance might be a little bit more more beneficial for you because most people usually carry around a ranged weapon as well and if you can decrease the amount of range damage that you're taking whilst also increasing the amount of range damage you're doing you can win those type of fights keep in mind that the stats the soul jade gives you in game do cap out at a certain point and the number associated with the increase will go from white to yellow when that cap is reached these are my top five things that I wish I would have known sooner when playing Naraka Blade Point. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and feel free to comment down below some things that you wish that you would have known sooner. Thank you all for watching. Again, my name is Blaze and I'll see you in the next video.